hello. Back out again on my own today. A point to nothing, Trav's at college. Um, actually, I'm doing two videos in one day, so you've hopefully seen my previous video on stopping first. But the rest of today, I'm actually on a walk now. You see all the gear. Um, so I'm doing the Big Nor VIG NOR Park Estate number 11 out of the top 12 country estates in the South Downs National Park that own 25% of the park. So that's about 100,000 acres out of 400,000. This one is a bit of a minnow because it's 1,123, I think, <laughs> at the last count. Um, so, where am I? I actually parked on the edge of the Bar Lavington estate, but that's another story. Um, and now I'm coming up, I crossed over the Aaron. it's not far from Stopham, strange enough, see the previous video. So now I am walking through the Big Nor Estate, if you flip round, it's about zero degrees but I'm boiling, I've got the radiator coat and when you're in the sun, full. Um, but yeah, I'm warm enough now. I've got gloves, hats, got anything I need, so I'll be good to go. Um, it's lovely here, dead quiet. The bit where I park was a bar Levitin estate, some access land, absolutely teeming with dog walkers, um, which is great because it's access land and they can run around. But here, as you'll see, I think it's dead quiet. I mean, I've never been here before, so new to me. Either way, I am heading, I'm gonna go on and walk through the Big Number Estate and probably down to roundabouts, Big Moor Roman Villa. I don't know, probably won't be going in, and I'm not even sure it's open. We are in December, so it may not be open anyway. And I'm running, see there, private woodland. I'm running alongside of the private bit of the wood, through the main wood, heading through. I'm on the Big Nor Estate. So, I shall push on, and I'll give you some proper detail, more detail of the estate in a little bit. Catch you soon. Okay, a bit further on. Oh, it's absolutely lovely here. Walking through the side of the, these woods and it's dead straight. See behind me. Um, straight down there. It's gorgeous. No one here. There's no car. Well, there's a car park quite a bit away. It's just there's nowhere. <laughs> I struggled to find a parking space. I did find one uh, car park. Um, but yeah, it's gorgeous. Absolutely lovely sun is sort of out when it's out it's really hot when it's not scarf on nothing too bad so big hills over that way not too much in fact very little mud and some of it was frozen so i'm heading down towards big roman villa as i say i may not go in there today but yes big let's get back to it so big park estate the 11th out of 12 big estates own 25 percent as i keep saying 1,123 acres, so a bit bigger than Stopham. So, in the mid, mid 14th century, it was owned by the Earls of Arundel. You're gonna come across them, or Arundel, Arundel Castle quite a lot in this series, strange enough, um, major landowners. Um, yeah, apparently, Bignall was originally used as grounds to fatten deer. I presume for hunting and eating. They used to like their deer back then, big on venison. Um, and then in 1584, it was bought by someone called Richard Pellet, P E L L A W T, who built the first like manor house, or the first one to our knowledge. And then it was sold in 1712 to somebody called Nicholas Turner. Hang on a sec, I'm just negotiating a little bit of mud. It's not too bad, but I need to keep my eyes on it. In fact, I'll stop for a sec. So yeah, and then in the 19th century, it was bought by a Cornish tin miner called John Hawkins. Back in the day, yeah, Cornwall, well known for its tin. I think there was lead. A lot of people made a lot of money. And then the current house was built from, or between 1826 and 1829. So massive history, goes way back this estate. Um, and then in 1914, part of the house was used as a hospital 
by the Red Cross and closed in 1919. Obviously we know what that's for, World War One. So they used part of the hospital for that. So that's a bit of a past history. Again, all goes back to medieval state. Sounds less of a hunting park this time than yeah, a deer fattening park. So they probably just let the deers run wild. I'm assuming if any of the, the peasants, the feudal peasants tried to take them, they would have been hung, but there you go. That was the way of things, the private states. There was common land. There's a massive story about that, but yeah, basically there was common land, feudal where the peasants were allowed to do certain things, but they weren't allowed to hunt the king's deer or the lord's deer. So what I'm going to do, I've got a bit more I'll talk about, um, like the current owners, a bit more modern history. Might get a gander at the Roman villa, although it's flat, so you've, you're not going to see something sticking up. We'll see what we see. I haven't been there before. And I'll push on, catch you in a little bit. Apologies. I don't know what it looked like in the sun, but it's such a glorious view. I just turned off uh, into the fields, going towards the big Naroman villa. Now, yeah, I don't know how it'll look in this because of the sun, but straight over there, big Neil, been up there. There's a video. Apparently there used to be a dragon, so legend says, lived up there. So yeah, I just thought I'd show you. It's just lovely, absolutely lovely. I'll push it on. Very quick, again, straight up there, you can probably see it, I think that must be the manor house, Big Nor Park State House. Um, I will check, but it's a great big house that looks like an estate house, uh, just crossing a field. Honestly, it's lovely. Just thought I'd show you. <laughs> I might be wrong, but I will check. Right, carry on. Okay, I am now at Big Nor Roman Villa. Hope you can see it. I've got the sun in my face, but I'm uh, hoping you can. As I suspected, because it's December, winter time, it's shut. <clears throat> I will put it on my list at some point, maybe next year. Probably opens in Easter. I'll do a video of that. Anyway, so yeah, that's it is part of the Bigner estate, uh, but I won't go into details if I say it's a Roman villa. So, carrying on, finishing off the story about the Bigner Park Estate. Um, it's now owned by the Bigham, B-I-G-H-E-M family, who've owned it since 1926. It was bought by Charles Bigham, the second Earl of Mersey. Mersey, Liverpool, I guess originally they came from up that way. Um, and Edward, the third Viscount Mersey, moved in with his family in 1959. Um, and in 1992, Richard the Fourth Count Mersey took over. He then died in 2006, so you know, the family have been running this since 1926. And now, from 2010, since then, the fifth Viscount Mersey, who's known as Ned, uh, full name Edward John Hallam Bigham, he's a music composer. You can look him up. I'll probably stick up a photo, but yeah. That's his interest, but he owns the Bigner estate. Um, the house, which I believe we did pass, which I showed you. I'm gonna double check. <laughs> it's, it's, it's gotta be, it's a huge house. Yeah, you can. they do weddings, corporate events. If you want a wedding there, I did look it up. 5,950 quid it starts at. So yeah, <laughs> you've got to have a few quid in the bank. So yeah, you then got the Roman villa. Now I will turn the camera but it's just, oh, it's lovely, but you're going to get the sun straight in it. But just to tell you, so Bigham, Bigham, Bigner Hill up there. Um, and I, there's a video there, the dragon one. I've been there before. It is absolutely lovely here. Um, not met any walker walkers, just locals, all very friendly, really nice. A horse rider, a couple of farmers. Um, guy who looked the classic country person and his well he's striding around with his cap on so and they're really nice really friendly really quiet lovely place it's a weekday so it will be quieter but honestly it's gorgeous so what i'm going to do i've sort of given you most of the details i'm actually right by the village um so i'm going to go there 
it's lunchtime, so I have a spot for lunch. There is a church, so I may well check that out as well. Um, yeah, so that, can't see myself because of the sun. Yeah, I'll do that next, but honestly, it's amazing. Really nice around here. cup of tea pork pie lovely jubbly um, I'm at the church it's called Holy Cross Bigner um, it's a lovely place <laughs> oh, but you need to win the lottery if you want to get a house here um, just a lovely village quite it's a few cars but it's not like a three-way anyway I'm gonna have my lunch and I'm gonna give you a quick tour around the church it looks very very old so yeah I'll eat and church Okay, I've had lunch. So, I thought I'd show you the Holy Cross Church, uh, Bigner. West Burton one, it mentions a Roman villa. Yeah, honestly, it's dead quiet here. Such a lovely place. <laughs> but you need to be a lottery winner, is my guess. Um, it looks really old. I don't know anything about it. I didn't even, well, I hadn't researched the village. Um, but I saw the spires in the distance, spire, so I thought I'll have a look. So we shall find out together. They normally have a little bit of history inside them. I've already checked it's open if I'm honest. <laughs> Most of them, I find these little ones in these villages are all open. I'm sure I haven't been to many in towns, but I'm sure like you go into a small church in Brighton and they're all locked, except on Sundays. Here we are. Just finished church. So if it's a bit dark, that's because it's a bit dark. Um, yeah, those books. There's no books about the history church of the Holy Cross. Let me see if I can find something there. I have to say I've got my glasses, so I might struggle. What I may do is if I can't find out when it was built, I'm sure it was probably goes way back to Doomsday Book and then it's been dark since then. I shall chuck some stuff up. I'll try and look it up. But yeah, lovely little church. Yeah, there's no big information things on the wall, but it would have been the church for the village and the parish. Um, well, that's in Latin get my daughter, she's good at Latin. Uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna try. We'll be standing here for half an hour. But yeah, definitely been around a while. You can see from the old brickwork and it's probably been rebuilt. Well, but they're normally, some of them, a lot of them go back to Saxon times. Um, obviously the Romans were around here. So yeah, it's probably pretty old. So there you go, I'm going to head off back through the estate now and I shall catch you in a bit. Actually, I'll just take you outside again. Yeah. Oh God, <laughs> that's because I'm doing it one handed. <laughs> oh, let me shut the door. It's just to show you how quiet it is. Yeah. There's the cemetery. Looks pretty old. I can see any dates. Do you know, I can't see any dates. October. Wow, that looks like 1732. No wonder I can't see the dates on it. 1771. Wow. Yeah. Some of these go back which is why they're very difficult to read. But absolutely lovely here. As I say, I'm gonna head back. So I'll catch you in a while. Okay, back in the car. 
and the car park, I mean, it seems to be dog walkers heaven. I can see why, but there's literally, I've never counted that many dog walkers. It's just loads of open access land. Um, they can run their dogs around, but it's just like a, it's called Lord's Peace. And it's actually on the Barlavington estate, which is adjoining the big mall. So I went backwards, um, I think, because I went the other way and there's no car parts that way. That's why I saw nobody. Anyway, I'm rambling again. So, yeah, as to the walk um, across the estate, it's lovely. Everyone's really friendly. I'm not saying they're not normally. I don't know. I just got good vibes. Farmers waving and villages are all. Um, yeah, lovely village, lovely church. Um the funny thing is, talking about my history hat, okay, I set, I, st I walked through and I thought, God, I'd love to live here, but I'd need to win the lottery. The irony is, all these little villages um, that are on these estates, I mean, they would have grown up, they would have been in subservience to the Lord. The building, I think I showed you, the really nice old building was the yeoman's building, so he would have been like the lieutenant. It's a, like a step up, but not quite Lord or Baron, whatever. And so they would have been really poor. So all these areas, the, the land, the people in the countryside were like the really poor people. And the way, the way society's changed around now, it's all the rich people. Well, OK, well off, better off people. And the poor people are sort of in the inner cities and stuff. It's the nature of the way things work. And of course, there's all this stuff. I'm not starting that debate about people who live in the countryside, you know, the kids can't afford, you know, who's lived there a long time. Anyway, that side... So I hope you learnt a bit about Bignor Estate. As I say, it's the 11th one, so there's 10 to go. I mean, we're on the baby ones at the moment. There's some big beasts coming up further down the line. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, catch you on the next one. As I said, I can't promise to do them in order, but I will get through them all. Okay, catch you next time. Bye.